What makes a shot cinematic? This is a question I've been asking myself a lot lately since I picked up the C70 and the Red Komodo, both two amazing cameras and I love filming with each of them, but you guys have been asking the question that I've honestly been asking myself, which is why is it that when I'm filming on the C70, a lot of the footage can look sort of video-like versus when I'm filming on the Komodo, it seems to be more cinematic. Now, both cameras are basically about the same price, but for whatever reason, I'm seeing this difference. And in this video, I wanted to kind of talk about what makes a shot cinematic. What's good creative fam, Brandon Washington here. And first of all, yes, the studio setup is a little bit different. So please let me know what you guys think down below in the descriptions. I was planning on saving the big reveal for the much anticipated C70 versus Komodo video, which will be coming out next week. But I wanted to kind of make this video in preparation for that video. And that's because I have been testing these cameras out a lot lately, shooting them side by side, head to head, trying to figure out what makes one better or just different than the other? And there's this thing that I can't quite put my finger on, and that is that whenever I'm shooting on the Komodo, the footage just has this certain weight or this certain cinematic feel to it that I can't quite get with the C70. Now, don't get me wrong, the C70 is a fantastic camera and it's pretty much a jack of all trades, but there is something special to this Komodo sensor. Now, I would love for this video to be very like collaborative. I'd love for you guys to let me know what you guys think down below in the comments because I really am trying to figure out what that difference is and it has been holding me back from finishing up that Komodo versus C70 video because I wanna make sure that if I make the recommendation, whether you should buy one or the other, that I get it right. Now, with this being a B Wash Media, Brandon Washington video, of course I'm gonna give you guys a couple tips in order to help you to actually improve your cinematic video. And one of them is something that I have been loving that I'm getting out of the Komodo and hence have been able to actually get it out of other cameras and that is blooming my highlights. Now, depending on how good your camera sensor is, you it's gonna be easier, maybe a little bit harder to pull this off, which is the whole reason why there are filters around this. But basically the idea of blooming your highlights is just the ability to have your highlights protected and having this nice fall off from where your image basically goes completely white because you've lost all the white highlight detail to like a latter port of those highlights where you can still kind of have that range. Now, if your camera has a really harsh cutoff from where that is, you can definitely pick up something like a Pro Mist filter or a beauty filter. I mean, they go by tons of different names at this point. And I'll have some links down below to some that you can check out. But blooming your highlights really does give your footage this extra special little look. And I think that's one of the reasons why I love some of these shots so much. Another tip when it comes to getting really cinematic footage is framing. I don't think people talk about framing enough. I mean, framing is pretty much everything. I mean, a poorly framed shot, no matter if you do everything else right, will still look off. And so it's really important that one, you know exactly what the focus of your frame is. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the item that is in focus, but at least you know what the focus of it is. So that way you can decide what type of tool, whether that's the 
rule of thirds or center framing or any of the other options out there, you can figure out exactly what is the focus of your frame to make sure that you are allowing your audience to get engulfed in that framing. Now, I'm not saying that that also means that your subject has to be the biggest thing in frame. Sometimes you want your subject to actually be smaller in frame in order to show the scope of everything around them, but it is important for you to know what the focus of your frame is. Like I said, a whole video could be done on framing alone. In fact, I might actually do that in the future, but a whole video can be done on framing, but framing is key. All right, the third tip that I have for you guys when it comes to getting more cinematic footage is the perfect imperfections. And so what I mean by this is sometimes you guys might see in cinematic movies or even on like some YouTube stuff that there's like this slight handheld shake, this organic look to the footage. And I know so many of us, myself included, love gimbals, but personally I've been finding that there is definitely a room for that organic shake. And by adding that, it actually adds a little bit of weight to your overall frame. This is something I've been doing with my Komodo a lot lately. I love shooting with this thing handheld, and I actually started doing it a lot with my Black Magic before I jumped over, but it does add this extra bit of weight to your footage, and so I strongly recommend that if you're trying to make your shots look more cinematic, maybe go with something that's gonna add a little bit of imperfection to your perfect shot. Now the fourth tip that I have for you kind of goes with that imperfection, but it also has to go with having motivated movement. Now I know a lot of people are kind of getting into these whip transitions and these you know crazy slides and all these different things, but there is something to making sure that your movement is motivated. Whether that's being motivated by the scene, whether you're trying to actually like establish a location or it's being motivated by your actual subject. So as your subject moves, you're moving with them. It just makes sense to make sure that your camera is actually moving in a way that makes sense for your shot. I used to see like all the zoom in and zoom out transitions and they're all cool and all that and I'm not taking anything away from anybody. But even with those type of movements, you wanna make sure that you're zooming in for a reason. Whether you're punching in to show something new or you're zooming out to get a better view of everything that's going on, just make sure that anytime the camera moves is being motivated by something that's important to your video. And the fifth and final tip that I have for you guys to make your shots look more cinematic is to shoot on red. Now when it comes, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I almost I almost tried to roll with that and make that make that a real one. No, I'm just kidding. No, the fifth and final tip that I have for you guys is actually just to slow down. There is something about slowing down the entire process to ensure that you're actually getting the shots that you want to get. See, a lot of times when you're out filming, you think I gotta get the shot because I'm gonna miss it. But a lot of times it's actually better to probably get fewer shots, but make them amazing by slowing down and actually getting the framing right, getting the shot dialed in just the way you like it. So that way you can make sure you walk away with something that is amazing, something that's fantastic, something that motivates you to wanna keep filming. So don't feel rushed when you're out there. It's okay to ask your client to give you, you know, an extra couple seconds or for you to take a moment to dial in your exposure just right or, or to make sure that you hit focus or, you know, whatever that is for you. It's okay to actually slow down. And this is something that I think I I've definitely learned over the last couple years, especially when shooting with cinema cameras like the Pocket, like the Komodo, like the C70, is that most of them actually force you to slow down because you have to dial everything in just so right in order to make sure your shot looks amazing. But by slowing down and making sure that you're dialing everything in, you're ultimately gonna get a shot that looks more cinematic, but ultimately is actually just gonna look fantastic. So those are five tips that I have for you guys. Again, please let me know in the comment section, what do you think makes a shot more cinematic? And also tell me what you guys think about this kind of battle that I've personally been having between the Komodo and the C70. I've heard other people sound off on this, but I would love to know from you guys what you think. But thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Hopefully it was helpful. I tried to add some nuggets in there so that way you guys could learn something. Let me know any questions you have down below. Also, don't forget if you haven't already, I do have a text chain, so now, feel free, text me at the number down below. If you have any questions, this is the best way to get in contact with me. Thanks so much again, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.